feeling now. This is Max's, uh, Max, Maxwell, come back up here, buddy. This is Max's roadmap to success. Now, we worked a lot with Barley in this session, actually, um, but I'm gonna cover all the things that I want the Guardians to do with uh, Max and with Barley. Um, so Max is, uh, he's a really smart dog. He learns things really quickly. So we wanted to spend as much time, Max, yep, it's like I got things to do. Um, we want to uh, really make sure that we stop anytime Max starts getting excited. One of the first things that we can do with this is when we come home. A lot of times we come home, the dog is worked up and we pet the dog. Anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're reinforcing. So when we come home, ignore Max completely. If he starts jumping up, just walk past him, pretend like he's invisible. When he settles down, reach over to pet him. If he's, as soon as you start extending your arm towards him, he's probably going to start jumping or get, you know, being anxious. As soon as he does, pull your arm back, don't say a word, just continue walking. Eventually you'll be able to come home and he'll stay quiet and you'll be able to pet him. And then you can appreciate and show him your love while he's in a calm and balanced state of mind. His big problem is anxiety because I think he had a trainer that was like, ah, I gotta be so excited for everything. Right, Max? Max here, Max. Such an athlete, come on buddy. All right, so uh, we went through the leadership exercise which is really gonna be more for barley. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll, we'll parse this out. So for Barley, we want to start you know, defining our personal space. Now, the leadership exercise that we went over is going to go a long ways towards helping the Guardians learn how to do that. And if they forgot how to do it or any of the steps, if they go to doggoneproblems.com, on the left, uh, click on the dog training tips on the left side of the page, there'll be a search box, type in leadership exercise. So you'll find a bunch of write-ups that have videos that are about 8 to 10 minutes long where I talk about all the ins and outs of it. Um, for the leadership exercise, what we like to do is keep on practicing with him until he's no longer challenging mom and laying down faster and faster. When he starts laying down within about 5 to 15 seconds, consistently, every time we do it, then we're going to start adding more time. So I usually go uh, after the dog lays down for 5 seconds, then we let him have the treat. And we say the word booty each time the dog touches it with its lips. Then we go to 10 seconds, then 15, then 30. Now, uh, 15, 30, 45, and then I go by 1 minute increments all the way to 15. And when we're doing this, what I usually would do is I do it and then I would have mom do it. And we just have mom and dad doing it until the dog is, uh, is able to start laying down within about five or 10 seconds of doing the exercise. Then we would have maybe one of the kids start coming involved if the kid's old enough and can, has a coordination to do it. Um, and again, when we do, when we get to 15 seconds, I do 15 seconds as dad, then mom does 15 seconds and the child does 15 seconds. Then dad goes to 30 seconds after the dog lays down. Now, um, so that's the leadership exercise. Uh, because uh, Marley, uh, Barley is uh, really, I don't say aggressive, but very um, animated, he takes treats too much. So we wanna learn how to teach him how to have a soft mouth. So we're gonna do the, saw, the slow treat delivery. Make sure when you're doing it, you're trying try to be parallel or just slightly coming at an angle. Don't go down. Um, and as soon as the dog comes forward or lurches forward, we're gonna say no and pull it away, or the hiss and pull it away, or just simply pull it away. Sometimes I pull it away, sometimes I turn my hand to the side. We want to get to the point where we put it up here and the dog finally just goes like this. Then we kind of put it in up to its lips and let him just take it. Ideally, the dog will t uh, push the treat with its tongue and then bite around it and do it in a gentle motion. So doing this uh, throughout the day, different times of the day, do about three to five treats. And eventually he'll start understanding that at any time that I start coming for it, the treat goes away. And so he'll stop doing that. Um, let me see, what else did we go over? Um, we went over the uh, how to create boundaries. We also practice with the door. So for the door, make sure again, we recreate the situation by having mom or dad call or text each other when we're on our way home, or if we have neighbors or friends who can help us out. When they come to the door, they ring the doorbell, wait about 15 seconds, then knock, wait about 15 seconds, ring the doorbell, go back and forth. Um, now this is gonna be a lot easier if the guardians counter condition the dog by feeding the treat and having somebody ring the doorbell, and I'd also do that with knocking. Uh, this is again something else you can go to the dog training tips section and type in counter conditioning. I always do it as one word and there will be a bunch of videos that explain how to do that. Counter conditioning the dog to not be reactive to the doorbell and the knock at the door is probably going to accelerate the process. I'd also like the guardians and they can go and search for door exercise, but we want to teach the dogs that they need to stay on the carpet right over here, not going to the front door when we have guests arrive. This way we can train the dogs. Uh, increasing the distance between them and the door is going to help them be a little bit more relaxed because it's not so intense um, and then help them practice and establish that new behavior. If it's too much for both dogs, practice with the dog separately. If this opening is too big, get a piece of cardboard or something where we can kind of make the area smaller. For the kitchen, again, get the, the uh, uh, a little painter's tape and put that down to make it easy to identify where it is, uh, where the line is. 
Uh, I also like to uh, have the dogs uh, sit before they go in or out of the door. Uh, uh, this is something where uh, I, if I tell the dog to sit at the door and one dog sits and the other dog doesn't, I let the dog who sits out the door, I don't let the other dog, and I walk away from the door. I only ask it one time, or better yet, tell the dog. Um, start with the dogs outside because they'd rather be inside. And eventually you'll get in, you know, when I walk away, I walk away for one minute the first time. And if the dog doesn't sit, uh, or uh, after one minute I go back to the door, I say sit again. If the dog sits, then I open the door. If it doesn't, I walk away for two minutes. Next time for four minutes, next time for eight minutes. So each time the dogs not comply the first time, they have to wait twice as long before they get another opportunity to comply. One of the things I would suggest, Max has been trained not to go on the furniture without permission. Now it's a family, they like the dogs uh, up on the, on the couch, but I would really try to teach Barley that he's not allowed to go on the couch for about a month, and then after that, only with permission and an invitation and for good behavior. This way it teaches him that I have to ask the humans and that it's not my divine right to be on the same level as them. For dogs, the higher they sit, the more rank or authority they have. So if Marley or Max is being disobedient or not listening, they immediately should have to get off the couch. What I do is I push them to the edge of the couch so they feel like they're gonna fall off, and then they jump off their own, the, on their own, and then I pet the dog and I say the word off. Max, come. Uh, for Max, uh, remember the anxiety is one of the things, Maxwell, Maxwell, is what we wanna uh, uh, avoid. So remember, when we're having him roll over, maybe practice having him sit, then lay down, then sit up, then lay down, and then roll over. And if he starts getting whimpery, whinery, whining, maybe we do a little bit of a focus exercise, uh, we take a little bit of a break, we give him an opportunity to just kind of settle down and then recreate it. Um, when we have situations where the dogs don't know how to behave, always look, how can I recreate that situation? Remove some of the elements, lower the intensity by increasing the distance, lowering the volume, uh, dimming the lights or whatever it is so the dog can focus on one step of the process by itself and then as we get that pro that step down then we go to the next step then the next step and we do this individually eventually we can re recreate the whole situation the dog knows what behavior is expected of them throughout um, for the uh, for the uh, feeding time I would recommend that the guardians use before dinner set the table and then uh, well let me back up a little bit um, I, because we have three kids in the house, what I suggested, and we brought over a bag of M&Ms. I like using positive dog training and positive reinforcement to train dogs. You can use the same principle for your kids. So what we're going to do is have a jar for each one of the kids or glass. Anytime the kid pets the dog with a purpose or um, uh, does something else that's desirable with the dog, makes the dog sit at the door, we're gonna, they're going to tell mom, mom's going to, or dad is going to put an M&M &M in their jar. If they do something they're not supposed to do with the dog, we're going to take an M&M away, &M away from the jar. Then at the, and right before dinner time, we're gonna set the table, all the kids go sit down at their places, we're gonna dump the jar, uh, the M&Ms under their plates and they're gonna count. And then while they're doing that, that gives mom and dad an opportunity to help the dog practice staying off of the hardwood floor and staying in the carpeted uh, living room. So during that, again, I would do the same, the same uh, technique that we use in the kitchen, microwave some high value, some meat, uh, preferably roast beef or something that's gonna have a really strong aroma, put that in the middle of the dinner table. And then one of, the, one of the parents can enforce the boundary of not letting the dogs in there while the kids are counting. And then that gives us the ability to recreate the dinner scenario while we're training our dogs and teaching them the behavior that we want them to have. Uh, petting with a purpose. Uh, I mentioned this when I dropped Max off uh, a couple weeks ago for his first visit. Making the dog sit before you pet him is a huge, huge thing. It is the simplest thing that you can do. But if the dog jumps up on me or nudges me or puts his paw on top of me, he's telling me what to do. So the next time the dog nudges me, I say sit. As soon as the dog sits, I pat him on the chin and say the word sit. And after a while, the dog will come and sit in front of the human and prepay for some attention. And we wanna make sure we do acknowledge that and pet the dog. And same thing with uh, passive training. Every time the dog comes up to us on his own and sits down, we're gonna pet him and say sit. Every time he lays down, we pet him and say crash. Every time he comes to us, pet him and say come. The more that we do these things then in the future, when they, we actually ask them to do it, they're inclined to do it. At first, we're just cheating, but we're waiting for the end result and just rewarding it and assigning a command word. I call it passive training. There's a couple of different names for it, but it really, really works effectively if all the members of the family get in the habit of it. Petting with a purpose would be really the first thing that I would have the kids involved with with the M&Ms because dogs learn through repetition, consistency, and good timing. And if we get the kids repping it all day long to try to get those M&Ms, Max is going to learn how to do these things. Same thing with uh, Barley. Um, I'm probably forgetting some other things, but the guardian, oh, the counter conditioning class. We're going to be doing a counter conditioning class 
uh, in memory of Mimi, uh, Mimi. Um, and basically I, Max is going to start coming to that class where we're going to teach him not to be so excitable when he sees another dog by using the uh, desensitization and a counter conditioning technique. We probably have some videos of Max on Dog Dog Problems or the uh, Facebook Dog Dog Problems page sometime in the future. All right, so that's going to do it for Max and Barley's Road Baptist success. Remember, everything that you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.